Hello everybody, welcome to Stories by Shelley. I'm Michelle from Stories by Shelley. It is so awesome to be able to read to you again. How are you? What have you been up to? What wonderful stories have you been reading? Can you let me know? If you love my stories, please give me a thumbs up. Say yes, I love your stories. If you have a wonderful story you want to share, or you want me to read it for you, please send information in the comments below, and I'd love to read your story next. So this one is called Wild About Books by Judy Serena and illustrated by Mark Brown. Now look at our characters. Oh, hey, they look like they're really enjoying that book. Do you love reading stories as much as I do? Oh, that's wonderful. Well, let's see. Wild about books. It started the summer of 2002 when Springfield librarian Molly McGrew, by mistake, drove her mobile uh, book mobile into the zoo. <gasps> Molly opened the door and she let down the stair, turned on the computer and sat in her chair. Hmm, look at her, sitting in her chair. At first, all the animals watched from a distance, but Molly could conquer the strongest resistance. Who do you think? is going to come and buy books from her book mobile store. What do you think, guys? What do you think? Who is going to come and buy that storybook? By reading aloud from the good Dr. Zeus, she quickly attracted a mink and a moose, a wombat, an oryx, a llama, a lynx, eight elephant calves, and a family of Skinks! Oh, she's reading aloud a Dr. Zeus book. Who loves Dr. Zeus? Oh, I do. And look at all the animals coming to see what's happening. In a flash, every beast in the zoo was stampeding to learn all about this new thing called reading. Oh, can you spot the crocodile? Where's the crocodile? Is that a crocodile? Oh, yes. Good job. There's our crocodile. And do you know what creature this one is with the long, 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 long neck? Well done. A giraffe. Forsaking their niches, their nests, and their nooks, they went wild, simply wild, about wonderful books. Choosing thin books, and fat books, and cats in a hat books, and new books, and true books, and heaps of how-to books. Look, everybody's reading. Elephants reading a book about Dumbo. Looks like the zebras have got a bunny rabbit. Even the baby Joey over here has a book. The crocodiles are reading about Peter Pan. The monkeys have got a banana cookbook. The giraffes have a cloud cookbook. There's the birds are reading, the bears, the seal, even the beaver reading about how to build a damn wall. Giraffes wanted tall books. Crickets craved small books. While geckos could only read stick to the wall books. The pandas demanded more books in Chinese. Molly filled their requests, always eager to please. She even found waterproof books for an otter who never went swimming without Harry Potter. Oh, so he likes reading Harry Potter. 
Do you like reading Harry Potter? The wizard stories? Raccoons read alone and baboons read in, br in bunches. And llamas read dramas while eating their lunches. Hyenas shed jokes with the red-bellied snakes and they howled and they hissed till their funny bones ached. A tree kangaroo who adored Nancy Drew began solving mysteries right there in the zoo, such as why were the bandicoots books overdue? Gently Molly taught lessons in treating books right, for the boa constrictor squeezed Cryptor too tight. Baby bunnies mucked up goodnight mom with their paws. Oh dear, look, the bunnies have made it all messy. And giant termites devoured Wizard of Oz. Oh no, you're not supposed to eat the books, termites. Don't eat it! And Bear's love of books was completely outrageous. They licked all the pages, licked all the pictures right off the pages. <gasps> oh dear, Bears, you're not supposed to lick the book. Tasmanian devils found books so exciting that soon they had given up fighting for writing. They made up adventures so thrilling and new that the others decided to be authors too. Pythons wrote with their tails, penguins wrote with their bills, and porcupines, well, they wrote with their very own quills. At the new insect zoo, bugs were scribbling haiku. The scorpion gave each a stinging review. Hmm, let's see. So the walking stick wrote, a cannibal twig silently devours a leaf eating not eaten. Huh. And he says, pretentious. Huh. The dung beetle wrote, roll a ball of ding dung, any kind of poo will do, baby beetle bed. Pee, it stinks. Millipede wrote, I dig for treasure in my enchanted castle, a rotten apple. And he wrote, boring. The giant hissing cockroach said, hiss, 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 hiss. And he said, redundant. As Cheetah's new novel began to take shape, he read chapters each night to the Barberry Ape. And although the gazelle couldn't spell very well, like everyone else, she had stories to tell. He imagined the hippo's enormous surprise when her memoir was given the Zulitzer's prize. Look how happy hippo looks. With so many new books, Molly knew what to do. She hired 12 beavers, a stork and a gnu to read a br branch, to build a branch library there at the zoo. Then the animals cried, ha ha, we can do it ourselves. And we can check the books out and put them on the shelves. And they did. They do to this very day. Three cheers for the Zooberry! <laughs> wow! Hip, hip, hooray! Look, the perfect zoo library. When you sit, when you visit the zoo now, you surely won't mind if the animals seem just a little hard to find. They are snug, snug in their niches, their nests and their nooks going wild, simply wild, about wonderful books. <laughs> I 
I hope you will go wild, simply wild about books. We'll see you again, everybody. Thank you for joining Stories by Shelley. Bye-bye.